All right, let's talk about traveling and the cost of living at the moment because it is absolutely ridiculous. We're talking about fuel, groceries, accommodation at campsites, national parks, and then even your cost of living at home pressures that are coming into it with your mortgages, your rent, your electricity, and your gas and stuff like that. Now, Maddie and I aren't even immune to this. So we've been traveling for about three or four months in a row now going around Western Australia, and we've come up with the top five tips that we have put together that might help you guys in terms of being able to travel at a less cost rate. Now the past two to three years of traveling has significantly changed for us and I'm sure it has for you guys too. Now when we first started traveling in Australia, we were even able to have so much spare cash to do activities because fuel prices were low, groceries were at a normal level and interest rates were a lot better. We were able to actually, even with this spare money, be able to take jet skis out on the Whit Sundays. And now we're doing a lot less big activities throughout our travels. We're even staying at lower cost campsites, not as many caravan parks, and we're staying at a lot of free camps as we're traveling to keep our costs down. So I really hope that this top five that we're about to present to you really helps you guys out, keeps you on the road, and keeps that money in your back pocket whilst going out and still having fun. So coming in at number five, stop modifying your vehicle and just go. And what I mean by this, as I have said many, many times before, is you don't need all of the gear to go to basic places like where we're at now. And if you really need some of the full driving or camping setup, get secondhand gear. It is not shameful. Maddie and I are doing it at the moment. The amount of places that you can go to on Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, borrowing from mates where they've only literally used it once or twice, any items, it's practically like brand new so good you don't need all the brand new and big expensive stuff so a misconception in the four-wheel drive and camping community is that you need all of the newest gear i know i've just said it before but what i'm trying to say is it has taken us three to four years to build the setup where we're at we've borrowed so many things over the years from mates and on facebook marketplace but as well as we started off with all the cheap gear and then we've slowly upgraded to the better quality gear that sort of lasts that six to ten year mark and that cheaper stuff that only lasts the one to two years to get us throughout that time period until we could save up enough money to keep it going. But we even hate to admit it, and it's not shameful, we have actually resulted in getting our own secondhand items. Even though in the past, we've gone from secondhand items to brand new items, we're now going back to getting secondhand items and some of the cheaper stuff, just so we can keep being out here and living the dream. So coming in at number four is explore closer destinations to home rather than going out to all of the social mediaized ones that are further away. Simply going to what national parks that are close to your home or off-road tracks that are within the area, there is definitely tracks out there that aren't all over social media and are hidden little gems. I can't really talk. I'm enjoying the view over here at Lucky Bay, but trust me, when we're gonna be back in about a month or so, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing up in the Victorian high country. Now, I have, and I don't know if you guys have as well, but I've actually already heard this one on other content and platforms around YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, but they didn't go into the depth that I would like to go into. Now, what I mean by this is because you're having to obviously travel not as far and you're staying as close means that you're not traveling as many kilometers, which hindsight means that you're not having to use as much fuel, not spend as much money on fuel and having to go to petrol stations that have extremely expensive fuel. We're paying up to $3.05 at some point so far on our travels. And if you guys haven't already, you can download simple apps on your phone such as Petrol Spy, which is the best one that we've found. So you can actually search in advance to see where the cheaper fuel survey stops are along the way to your destinations. Now, on top of this, do your research on campsites itself. So we've already talked about free camps, but downloading apps such as Wiki Camps or Hip Camps and doing research to campsites that are sort of within the area that you're wanting to travel in, rather than going to the massive, well-known campsites or caravan parks, you can often say 10 to 15 kilometers away at something that's literally half the price and then travel to the destinations each day where you want to do those activities. Do yourself and us full drive and off-roading communities a massive favor. If you're going to utilize those free camps that you find, please clean up after yourself. We have seen so many places in national parks and free camps getting shut up all around Australia and it's getting a little bit ridiculous. All we have to do is simply put your rubbish in your rubbish bag and leave nothing but footprints at your campsite and the places that you go to. And finally, it's not really a glamorous tip sort of in this under the number four that I was talking about, but travel in off-peak periods. Like we are staying at an area right now, Lucky Bay, that is so much cheaper in winter than it is compared to summer in those peak school holiday periods. Now I get it. If you're a family that's traveling, sometimes you can only travel within those periods and that sort of sucks. But 
Sometimes going a month or two outside of the peak season, you can actually half the price of your camping. Now, something I want to quickly talk about is something that Maddie and I have done, and this isn't gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but what we've done is we have actually got ourselves Starlink. Yes, it is $599 to get, and you've gotta pay $120 each month, but to compensate for that, we're now able to spend like those two to three weeks when we're out bush in free camps, not paying for campsites, and being able to save money on that and have the comfort of having internet wherever we go and on top of that being able to have all our normal food and water and little luxury items. That's our little hot tip. Do the maths yourself, but we have found we're about $150 off better a month by doing it that way. So number three on our list is pre-plan your meals and preempt where you'll be going and doing all your grocery shopping. So I've been there myself where my grocery list is nearly $500. Now, what can you do to avoid this issue during the cost of living whilst camping? Well, for me, what I do is I need to write a grocery list. If I don't write a grocery list, my price nearly doubles at grocery stores. What I mean by that is when I'm at the grocery store, you always grab a couple extra items just in case you don't have it at home. But I always find I have it at home and I just couldn't think on top of my head, hence adding extra hundreds of dollars that I didn't need to add. So another thing that I've got in my head to save money during a cost of living crisis is where you do your grocery shopping. If you go out back, I can assure you that your grocery shopping is gonna nearly triple or double in price. What I mean by that is IGA. I love you IGA while I'm out back, but you are expensive. So pre-plan where you're gonna do your meals. Shop at Audi, shop at Woolworths and get those special odd bunch fruit or Coles's I'm perfect fruit. That will save you a lot of money. But also, buy things in bulk. If you're gonna do some meals, pre-plan how many meals can I use some mints? Split up the bags if you get bulk packs. Also, chicken. Buy a whole chook and take it apart yourself. So then you've got the chicken breast and then you've got the chicken wings as well. I find that saves a lot of money if you actually do your research on where you're doing your meals and how you're doing your meals. Now, I'm not gonna be the biggest fan for saying this one, but give up your bought coffees. You can still make coffees while you're on road, just get a little setup like we have, and I find it saved us actually hundreds of dollars. I also find another way that I've saved a lot of my money is use multiple items for meals. Wraps, for example, great things. You can do breakfast burritos, chicken wraps, you can make tortillas. Um, you can also make corn chips out of them. So many little items. So coming in at number two is sharing the cost with family and friends. So this could be campsites, it could be cooking and food, it could be fuel. Sharing the cost with family or friends makes camping a bit easier, but it also makes it a lot more fun. Now, in this regard, when it comes to campsites, it's either caravans, free camping, or national parks. If you actually pop on the national parks website, or caravan sites, a lot of the sites will tell you how many people will fit in and how many vehicles will also fit into the site. What I recommend to do is figure out how many of you can fit on a campsite or how many vehicles and split the cost amongst each other. Prime example here at Lucky Bay, if you check on the park's website, each campground can fit one to eight people. So we paired up with our mates and split the campground. But if you are going in a group, there's nothing worse than a loud camping neighbour. So don't be too loud or excessively loud when you've got others around you, be courteous. So if you're heading out with a group of mates, plan to share the basic everyday items like foil, toilet paper rolls, not the same one though, and also things like your sources as well, but also forward drive items like your shackles and snap straps or activity related items like boards, board games. Share them all amongst each other. Say, hey, you bring that one and I'll bring that one. And my favorite one is a communal cook-up. This is a great way to save money. You split off the day saying, I'll cook Monday and Wednesday, you cook Tuesday and Thursday. What this allows you to do is you only then need to pack the ingredients for what you're bringing to cook that night. And then the other nights, when the other family or friends are cooking, you get to sit back, relax, and enjoy a night off from cooking. But it's also a great way to save money because you just only need to pack the ingredients that you need to cook but get to have different meals each night, not stuck with two minute noodles every night. So the final way to save money whilst in a group is to split the cost of fuel and car snacks. Because if you can all fit in one vehicle, then you can all split the cost of the fuel and the car snacks. I'm very keen on the car snacks, as you can tell. But these are just a couple of ways that you can save money 
by being in a group. Rightio, <laughs> so coming in at number one is delaying vehicle maintenance costs. And what I mean by this is that I saw an interesting survey that's recently come up showing that 56% of people at the moment, due to the cost of living, are delaying maintenance on their vehicles and full drives. Do not do this. This was a statement made by car expert at the end of last year. Now, whatever you do, do not do this. Everyone knows the old saying, poor man pays twice, buy once, buy right. And the reason why I made this number one is because it is so bloody important that if you do not replace or keep something maintained, it will be so much more expensive to replace in the future. For example, at the moment, we've got a power steering rack that has a failed bore joint. And if I don't get that fixed or maintained in the next 500 kilometers or so, I'm at a real risk of that power steering rack collapsing and then me doing severe damage to other vehicle part, other parts of the vehicle. Now, another example is don't replace that $30 bush, increase tire wear, you're up for new tires. Another one is don't do your engine oil or don't replace your diff oil, you're up for a new diff or your injectors blow, which then ultimately means that you're gonna be paying up to five times more to replace parts rather than actually maintain them. And I tell you what, I think this old girl is up to 9,000K since the last service. So I'll be doing a service before we head back home on this trip. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. We tried to make that as quick as possible and to the point and interesting for you guys to watch. So drop in the comments below if we've missed anything because we'd love to know if you've got any new ideas during cost of living on how to save money while traveling. Righty-o. This bloke's just staring at me, I don't know why. <laughs>